The indicators shown in this video continue to help me make weekly income trading credit spreads on SPX. And one of my favorite parts towards the end shows just how little you need the market to move in your favor so you can suck that premium out of the market and put it right into your account. Now let's dive in. Let's walk through the forecast for today and talk about a trade I took that was kind of based on the forecast, but really just want to talk about finding opportunities, you know, so we can trade more often. So typically when I look at this particular forecast, I didn't really think I was going to take any forecast related trades. And again, the reason why is the magnitude from a top to bottom uh, is, you know, maybe 16 points or so, less than 20 points. And it's really not an extended period of time. So this wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to this like, oh, I'm going to go into this day bearish. I'm going to go into the day bullish. I was kind of like, well, it's just kind of sideways with a little bit of a bearish slant, if you want to call it that. So really kind of inconsistent. So when we see this type of forecast, uh, we're really going to need some additional things if we're going to want to trade, uh, you know, with this. So. Now on this particular day, I'm gonna just show you the daily candle. We still have another couple hours, so this may end differently. We were, you know, to put some context around, the market was rallying actually pretty hard on the fact that there was a bank bailout and some rate hike stuff. And, you know, just, just know that there was some um, external events that was really pushing the market up and there's a lot of short covering in this moment. So on this particular day, um, the forecast was just kind of choppy. And so the, even though the market was rallying at this point, I'm looking for potential ways to fade that rally. And I was looking sort of in the middle of the day because there's a little bit of a drop here and then really towards the end of the day. And this is about this time is where I ended up catching a move. Um, and, and I just wanted to kind of illustrate the point that you know, whatever the current market is doing, it's more important. So if you don't have a strong trend here and there's some kind of big event going on, in this case, there were some bank failures and then now there's a bank rescue. A lot of times these things can, they're just outside the, the intraday seasonality patterns because there's new information coming into the market and the markets all, it can be all over the place. So this is why we continue to use chart confirmation and I'm using market net flow in this particular video, but just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, so, you know, I'm basically looking for a fade towards the end of the day. And if we look at market net flow, we still have um, a while to go, but basically the market was pretty choppy like we expected. Uh, but then news came out that there was going to be a bailout of a bank. And so, there was some short covering and I want to point out the GEX levels here. There was one at 390 on SPY and 395. This actually translate to, uh, to about 3960. That can be off by a few points for SPX, but the market ba basically rallied pretty hard and I'm really looking for an opportunity to short, um, once we get to some sort of key level. And at this point I'm looking at this GEX level. So we exceeded that and the calls and puts um, were you know, bullish, obviously. The puts were sort of trading sideways most of the day. And I'm using this momentum indicator, but once the SPY got up to this uh, GEX level and started to pull back, the momentum slowed, which is normal. But then as it, it, it kind of got stuck around that GEX level and the momentum started to shift. So we're seeing this bearish divergence, if you will, of the momentum, as well as puts starting to rise. So even though we had a lot of bullish activity, we were so overbought and we're trading against key levels and the momentum is clearly shifting uh, down. I was like, well, you know, let me see if I can find an opportunity to take a trade in this area. So if we look at the chart for when SPX got up to that GEX level and pulled back, I ended up selling a out of the money. It was about uh, eight or nine points out of the money. I sold a 39.60. That was right where the GEX level was and bought five points higher. I got a credit of $1.60. Now, granted, this was at around 1.45 in the afternoon. So there's only a couple hours left in the day. This is Eastern time. And I was able to sell that spread for $1.60. And again, as the puts continued to rise and the momentum shifted lower 
And I was expecting this sort of end of day pullback or at least some kind of decent sized pullback. We ended up getting a little bit of a move down and I wanted to kind of point out the actual number of points here. So again, remember I was, I'm going to call it eight points out of the money when I entered and the market went down to, I think it was right around 39.44. So I went about eight more points out of the money. So I was able to sell it for $1.60 at eight points out of the money. And I was able to buy it back for a dollar. Um, the candles are covering up some of these levels, but I was able to buy it back for a dollar when it was eight points lower. So eight points is really all you need to get a decent gain. I wasn't about to hang on to this um, for the entire day because obviously, again, calls are above puts. And just because we're getting a pullback doesn't mean we can't see a rally end of day. We also have bullish um, options on all the time frames too. So this was really kind of a contrarian scalp uh, with multiple factors here. And again, the forecast really wasn't telling us much other than, you know, you could potentially look for sort of a fade in the afternoon. And that's basically what I was going off of. So I hope that helps kind of put some of these things together and we'll see you in the next video.